Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're back on the 2013 Impreza Sport. In the last video, we did a rear hub bearing assembly and rear brakes, and we also discovered there was a coolant leak on top of the engine and diagnosed that as being a failed coolant crossover pipe O-ring. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking the intake manifold off, getting down to that bad coolant crossover O-ring and replacing it. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into this repair. So guys, starting out, as you may be able to hear, the coolant is currently draining out of the car. We're gonna need to get the coolant out. We just pulled the little plug at the end of the bottom of the radiator, letting that drain out now. We also have the front end of the car lifted, supported on jack stands. One, just to make it easier to get under there and drain the coolant. Two, just so we're not bending over so far, working on this engine, breaking our backs. So first thing we wanna do is get the intake ducting here out of our way. We've got eight millimeter hose clamp here, eight millimeter hose clamp here. We have, uh, should be a plastic push pin here, but they've replaced with a bolt and a nut. And uh, I believe there's a PCV hose on the side of that silencer box to take loose. Yes, down here there is a little clamp and PCD hose to take loose. Now that that is out of the way, we need to go ahead and remove part of our air box. And that is just so we can get over to this side of the engine a little bit later in pulling this intake manifold off. up here and disconnect our map sensor here and we're going to reach back here and disconnect the electrical pigtail on our throttle body. Get those loose. We need to grab our PCV hose here where it goes in the intake. Slide that off. Over on this side we need to take loose our brake booster vacuum hose from the intake manifold. Set that to the side. Around the back here on our throttle body, we have two coolant lines. We're going to unbolt the throttle body. It's four 10 millimeter headed bolts and just let that flop forward away from the intake. Those loose and we'll let our auto body just flop forward like so. Next up, we need to remove our fuel hoses. These likely will have fuel pressure in them, so be wary of that when removing those. That fuel spray doesn't come out and hit you. Remove the supply fuel line. We need this AST8028, and it is a good idea to go ahead and pop open your gas cap uh, just in case because sometimes. Uh, these things will pressurize and want to just keep leaking fuel out of this hose. And uh, opening the gas cap can help to uh, lead off that siphoning effect so you don't drain your whole uh, gas tank out. Just work your tool in like so. Push the fuel line forward till the tool slides in. And you can pull it back again. Pressurize fuel rag around it to catch the spray and pull it off like so. And we'll set it off to the side. We have our disconnect tool. And we'll go ahead and pull the clamp. And our hose off. We'll pop that off to the side as well. So guys, here on the back side of the engine, you want to take loose the um, EVAP purge solenoid pigtail here. You want to remove the two nuts 
down here on either side of this EGR pipe. And as I said before, just take the throttle body loose and tilt it forward or, well, back towards the transmission. Now on to the size of the engine. We've got these fuel rail protectors to remove, 10 millimeter headed bolts. You get the two bolts out, it should pop right off. So now that those fuel rail protectors are off, we can remove our fuel lines to the rails. Uh, you just put a little screwdriver in to the tab right here, pop it out, and it should pull straight off. We'll do that on the opposite side of the engine as well. Again, we just put a little screwdriver in the little notch, pull that blue lock tab forward. Might need to help guide it out. And just like so, pop that blue tab to the front and wiggle your fuel run off. Only a little bit of fuel will come out, just whatever's left in the rails. All right, so now we can remove the eight 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold the upper plenum on and uh, get it out of here. So we got four down each side and uh, that should be the last holding it. Now that all eight of those fasteners are out, we should be able to push the upper plenum here back just a hair to clear that uh, EGR pipe and uh, pull it on up, just like so. All right guys, so here's where this repair gets a little not so straightforward as to do this in car is a lot more complex, so let's try to make it a little easier. So we've disconnected the electrical pigtail here at the EGR valve. We've taken these ground straps loose, crank sensor, knock sensor, uh, a couple other things just to give us some wiggle room in this wiring harness where it goes over the coolant crossover pipe. We've also loosened up this hose and clamp here, and we've taken loose the EGR pipe back here, 27 millimeter nut on that. Now what we're gonna do is take the two 10 millimeter headed bolts loose on either side here and either side here and pick this up just enough so we can reach under there, replace those O-rings, put it back down and torque it to spec and put the car back together. Otherwise we'd have to take off basically the entire wiring harness of the vehicle all the way down on each side of the cylinder heads, down underneath and um, just makes it way more time consuming, way more involved, uh, replace, removing the EGR pipe that's way down on the backside of the cylinder head, way down there. Just uh, a lot more stuff that uh, I think we can uh, alleviate and sneak it out the easy way. All right, have those four bolts out now. These are our new O-rings. Uh, should be a part number 8069330010. So as I just said, we're gonna try to gently pull up on this crossover pipe and uh, get it up just high enough where we can reach under there, pull out the old failed O-rings, put the new ones in. Looks like we're gonna have just enough wiggle room to get under here. You might wanna take a long pick and just grab that old O-ring out of there. Just be careful not to scratch the ceiling surface when you do so. And, uh, 
these O-rings are just completely flat, so no wonder they were leaking. And uh, with the cold snap we got this week, and by cold snap I mean seven degrees here in the south, which is a cold snap for us, uh, you know, that might have been enough to get them shrunk down and shriveled enough for them just to start to go ahead and leak. All right, the first O-ring is out. Man, what a world of difference between what we just removed and uh, the new one. And just like that, just breaking apart where it should be nice and squishy and pliable. This one is uh, done for. So we'll go ahead and put these in there and torque that back down. And uh, ring number two is out, and just as brittle. New O-ring dropping in. And just like that, we should be good to go. We can go ahead and put the four bolts back in and torque crossover pipe, clean up our spilled coolant here, and go ahead and tighten up that EGR pipe nut and put all our electrical connectors back where they should be. And then put the two bolts in here and uh, replace the uh, rotten old zip ties that broke when we uh, pulled up on the uh, harness cover here. All right, so the new O-rings are in. We've cleaned up our spill there. Now we gotta torque the four 10 millimeter headed bolts to 6.4 Newton meters. All right, all our electrical pigtails are connected. Our EGR pipe is tightened back down. We've replaced the broken zip ties for the harness, replaced the bolts that hold the harness cover in place, connected the knock sensor and the crank sensor and the two ground straps here. Now we're gonna do real quick is replace the PCV valve. The hose is nice and rock hard and the valve has probably not been replaced in a while. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this hose off and pull that PCV valve out of there. All right guys, so we need to go ahead and remove our PCV hose and our valve. And uh, yeah, that rubber is that brittle that uh, it just snapped right off. So that's why we got a new hose. We'll go ahead and pull the valve off, see if we can get the socket over with the uh, piece of hose on there. Got that out. And uh, yeah, nice and crusty and rusty. Old shake test, not making any noise, so we'll throw that in the junk pile. Our new PCV hose is a 9907180690. And our new PCV valve is 11810AA131. That's what our PCV valve should sound like. Should rattle when we shake it. So go ahead and put a little bit of uh, Teflon tape on our threads and get it started back in the engine block. Snug it on down. Torque spec really doesn't matter when you use a Teflon tape instead of a uh, liquid gasket. You just snug it up. And we'll go ahead and install our nice pliable PCV hose onto the valve and just let it sit until we get the intake manifold back in place. All right, now we need to go ahead and clean up the sealing surface 
uh, of the uh, tumble generator valves here, this little housing. Get all this cleaned up so we have a nice clean sealing surface when we bring the plastic upper plenum on. All right, we've got our mating surface nice and clean there. We can go ahead and pop a gasket back on for the uh, EGR pipe down here. And we're gonna go ahead and get ready to install our new throttle body gasket, which is a 16175AA430. And our new plenum gaskets, which are 14035AA570. We got one set for each side. So those gaskets just pop in the groove on either side. Pull the tab to pull them out and throttle control gasket. Got a little tab here and pop it out as well. Just pop them in and uh, good to go ahead and put this intake back on. All right, so we got our new gaskets on both sides and the new throttle body gasket in. I'm gonna go ahead and plop this back on top of the engine. We'll go ahead and throw our eight 10 millimeter headed bolts down and tighten the intake back up. All right, all the intake bolts get torqued to 8.3 Newton meters. And we're gonna start on the inside and work our way out in a circular pattern or crisscross pattern. and good so now we can go ahead and reconnect our fuel supply to our fuel rails on either side just wiggle it down on the hose push the blue lock tab back through till it clicks in place now on this we're going to leave the uh, fuel roll protectors off until we get it all back together and can cycle the key on and off and make sure we don't have any fuel leaks we'll go ahead and pop the one back on opposite side just like so again we're going to leave that fuel rail protector off just to make sure we don't have any fuel leaks so next up i'm going to return or reattach the line And our fuel supply line, just click it on. Our brake booster vacuum line. On the back side here, we'll connect our uh, EVAP purge solenoid, electrical connector. Around the other side, we'll take our fresh PCV hose, go ahead and pop it on to the nipple there at the intake manifold. Also, we'll go ahead and swing our throttle body up into place. Go ahead and put the throttle body coolant hose back in its holder on the intake manifold. Grab our four long 10 millimeter headed bolts, run them through and torque them down to, memory serves right, 10 Newton meters. So 10 Newton meters set on the torque wrench for our throttle body here.
All right, we'll go ahead and reattach our electrical pigtail for the throttle body and our electrical pigtail up here for our map sensor. And we're gonna go ahead and plug our mass air sensor back up to the back of the air box, just so we don't trigger any mass air sensor codes while cycling the key for our fuel leak test. All right, so we're gonna go cycle the key a couple times, let the fuel pump run and make sure we don't have any fuel leaks. All right, so we cycled the key several times there. Fuel pressure is built up in the lines. Don't see any leaks on this side. And don't see any leaks on this side. So we are good to go ahead and put those fuel rail covers back on. Now we can go ahead and install our air filter in the back side of our air box. All right, guys, now to put our intake back on. Don't forget the uh, PCB hose at the bottom there beside the silencer. Put your plastic push pin back here. And we are all set. Now all we gotta do is refill our cooling system. Let me go ahead and put our cooling system vacuum refiller in place. and cooling system is filled. All right guys, so the cooling system is topped up. We've topped up the reservoir, uh, done one final visual inspection, make sure everything's plugged up, everything's bolted down, everything's the way it should be. And uh, now all we gotta do is start it up and let it run till operating temperature is achieved. Recheck for any leaks. After that, we can put the splash shield on underneath, take it off the jack stands and go for a test drive. And we're pretty much done at that point. All right, let's fire her up.
And we'll go ahead and hook up the scan tool and uh, watch our engine coolant temperature. And yes, guys, I do have a new scan tool, and we will be doing a separate video on it uh, sometime soon. All right, so we'll just watch this and monitor our engine coolant temperature. And once it's uh, gotten up to temperature, we see the thermostats open and close, coolant fan cycle on and off. Uh, we're good here. All right, guys, we got up to 210. We're dropping back down now. Thermostat is open. Both upper and lower hoses are hot. So it should be good to go now. And our leak is no more. Nice, dry, and clean. So guys, back from the test drive, everything seems to be A-OK, -okay, ready to return to the customer. Nice and dry, still under here, no more coolant leak. Uh, as you may have seen, there was a TPMS light on, checked it out with the Top Don TP47 TPMS tool, and found that our right front TPMS sensor has a dead battery. So I'm gonna put that in the report for the customer. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next one.